I don't know about you, but I really enjoy playing board games with friends. I like talking, eating good snacks, and just having some friendly competition. But it seems like every time I play a board game with a group of friends, there's always that one person who takes forever on their turn. Everybody's like, dude, the world's not going to blow up if you take your turn too fast. But it's like they're just staring at the board and thinking and thinking. And I don't have anything against thinking, but think on other people's turn, then take your turn. And I feel like every group of friends has that person. It's like the deep thinker who just takes really long turns. Maybe that's you. Maybe that's all of us sometimes. Anyway, in the group of guys I play board games with, this guy's name is Ted. And one of my other friends was like, Mike, let's make a turn timer for Ted so the board game doesn't take like three hours to play. So that was like two years ago, and I finally got around to building a turn timer. I am calling this the Ted turn timer because it was inspired by Ted. It's super simple. Really, it's just like any old timer. And if you like playing games with friends, then I have a feeling you know somebody just like Ted. In this video, I'm going to walk through how to build a turn timer just like this. I'll go over the design, the parts I got, the 3D printed model, all that stuff will be in the comments. Really, you can put this together pretty quick. And I have a feeling if you like playing games with friends, then you probably know somebody like Ted, so this thing could be really helpful for you. Stay tuned. Subscribe to our YouTube channel to get more videos like this. Before we start, just a big shout out to Ultium for sponsoring this video. Huge thanks. You can check the description to get a free trial of the Ultium software. All right, so what I want to build is like just a simple timer with a button. I don't want it to be like super intrusive, so I don't want it to make any noises and stuff like that. I just want it to have some LEDs that change color through a spectrum of color. So like over the course of a turn, right? And you'd be able to set the length of each turn with the timer, right? So I'm thinking there's gonna be a single button on this timer and then like you can set the time. So we'll have like a set time mode. And then once you've set the time, then it goes into play mode. And then let's say you set the turn for one minute. Basically the LEDs in the turn timer will change from like, I don't know, I'm thinking green go through a, a spectrum of colors, end up at red, and then when the turn is over, it starts like blinking red or something like that. That's kind of what I have in mind. So anytime I've got a project in mind like this, usually what I do is I try to run through just this quick prototyping process. It's somewhat formalized, but I don't necessarily hold myself to it super strictly, but this is what I like to do. So first what I do is I draw a picture of what it is I wanna build. This is like no holds barred, whatever I wanna draw, I just draw it out there, even if it sounds crazy. Then I list out in words, all the stuff that is in the picture. So if I drew a button, I'm gonna list the word button underneath the picture somewhere. Then what I try to do is I try to add some specifications to my list of words. Like what kind of button is it? Or what type of microcontroller am I gonna use? So specifications. And then what I do is I start to prune off the ideas that are not immediately required. Once I've kind of done that, again, drawn pictures, I list out the words, add some specifications, prune off that list. Once I've kind of done that, that's when I actually start building something out, start researching the components more, and I just really try to do things as incremental as possible. Now me, I am not an artist, and I've kind of like just become okay with that. I do love other people's beautiful lines, great artwork, and like great precision to detail, but I've kind of just grown okay with my own style because I can interpret it, and for my purposes, that's good. And usually when I'm drawing these things out, I'm trying to get my ideas on paper as fast as my hands will work. So what I want, like I'm imagining the aesthetic of this thing is like this smallish hockey puck looking thing. It's gonna have some cool LEDs on it, you know, that kind of thing. So I'm just gonna draw like a box for the case, you know, like the enclosure that this thing is. And it's gonna need a big old button in there, and I'm gonna want some LEDs. I'm gonna need some type of microcontroller to be the brains of this thing. I'm gonna use a switch to turn it on and off. It's gonna need a battery. And it would be neat if I could like set the timing of it maybe with a phone app. I don't know, that might be kind of cool. And that's really about it. Like I said, I'm trying to keep this thing pretty simple. Now at this stage, I really do just allow myself to draw anything. I just let myself live in the clouds while I'm drawing. I say goodbye to reality for a little bit and I just pretend like anything's possible. Even if I know it's total BS and it isn't gonna happen, I'll still draw it out if I think about it. Because for me, this whole thing's it's in 
a creative endeavor. And sometimes I feel like my outlandish ideas end up spawning something that's actually really practical. So the outlandish thing goes away, but then something practical might kind of like bounce off of that that wouldn't have come unless I gave myself to be a little bit unrealistic. So once I've drawn out the picture, then I just list out in words what I've drawn. So here I've got LEDs, got a button, got a microcontroller, got a switch, got a battery, got the case, AKA the enclosure. And then, you know, I'm thinking about like that phone app Wi-Fi. Now, once I've got the words down, now what I do is I start adding some specifications. Like what are these things actually gonna be? So for the LEDs, I've been wanting to play around with those individually addressable LED strips. I think the popular name is NeoPixel. For the button, I want like a cool game controller button, like an arcade game button. And it'd be cool if it was, if it had its own LED, like it was internally lit. For the microcontroller, I'm definitely gonna use something that is Arduino compatible. Now, if you don't know what an Arduino is, maybe you think it's a sub sandwich, make sure to check out our video about what is Arduino and it'll get you up to speed really quick. So for the microcontroller, I need something that's gonna be Wi-Fi enabled if I wanna connect to the internet. So I think I'm just gonna use an ESP32. And I just want a simple on off switch. That's pretty straightforward for the switch. And I think I can use a lithium polymer battery. I know those are like 3.7 volts. And I'm pretty sure the ESP32, that's what that runs off of. But I have heard that the NeoPixels are kind of power hungry and I'm not sure what the voltage and like the, the stuff is for that. But for now, I think I'm just gonna say lithium polymer. Now for the phone app, honestly, I'm kind of drawing a blank and that leads me to the next phase of this process which is pruning away stuff that is not essential for getting a project off the ground. Now, I could definitely add some neat Wi-Fi feature to this project in the future, but for just building like this minimum turn timer, it's just not necessary. And I just don't want anything that's gonna hold me up because I love to build momentum. I feel like if I can get some momentum going, like actually get some stuff working, then it helps me that much more get a project actually done. So I'm just gonna scratch this off my list for now. Again, doesn't mean I won't add it later, but for now, just don't need it. Do you need a printed circuit board design software to move your prototype to the next level? All Team Designer is a great choice for designing PCBs, sharing your design with team members, and even getting your design manufactured. What really kind of blows me away about this software is that even though it's a super powerful tool, at the same time, it's really intuitive to use. They've got helpful video tutorials built right into the software so you can kickstart your learning process and actually get something made. Right now, you can get a free trial to All Team Designer with our link in the description. That's right, you can test drive this super powerful software with a free trial. Just check out the link in the description. All right, so I've kind of drawn everything out here, got some basic specs. Now what I wanna do is start looking around online and trying to find stuff. And it's at this point that I usually make myself a simple spreadsheet, right? And I start looking a lot closer at the specs of each of the components to make sure that they can do what I want them to do. So I ended up getting like a cool NeoPixel LED ring, cool arcade game style button. I'm um, using an unexpected maker ESP32 Feather S2 for the microcontroller. I also got a proto board to solder stuff to and a lithium polymer battery. Had a simple switch laying around, so everything's pretty set. I was thinking I might need like a boost converter to boost up the voltage to five volts or maybe like use a logic level shifter or something like that, but it looks like I won't have to do that to do this, so that, that simplifies it quite a bit. So here is a very imperfect circuit diagram here. I'm using Fritzing to show this, and there were some components that didn't match up, so I'm just doing my best. For example, I used an ESP32. Here I'm showing a Nano. It's, you know, you can still use a Nano for this project for sure, but I had the ESP32. And then for the um, NeoPixels, I didn't couldn't find any good NeoPixels examples, so I'm just using this part right here. But let me just try to walk through it as best I can. So with the NeoPixel strip, there's a data line that comes in and then there's just a power in ground. In the data line, I'm just connecting up to a GPIO. I ended up using digital pin six. And then I have that arcade button attached. Now my arcade button has an internal LED. So I show a button and an LED, but it's actually one, just one thing. There's four leads off the end of the button though. So one of the leads just goes to a digital pin. I'm using digital pin three. It is important that that digital pin be connected to an interrupt. So depending on the board you use, you wanna make sure that there is an interrupt attached there. The other side of the button's just going to ground. And then uh, with the LED, it's got an internal resistor on that LED. So you're able to just hook it up to uh, power and ground. And that's really it for the circuit. The only thing I'm not showing here is the on off switch. 
And on the uh, ESP32 I'm using, there's an enable pin that you can uh, connect an on-off switch to, and it basically can turn on and off power, which is really pretty handy um, when you've got it connected to the battery. So, so I soldered up the ESP32, and I had that NeoPixel ring that I soldered up. Did some checking on the button to make sure I was connecting the right pins where, and I soldered up the button. And then at first I had it running on a breadboard, but you know what? I ended up soldering everything together on a proto shield and just sticking it in the enclosure. Now for the enclosure, please feel free to make fun of me because man, I'm just not a uh, 3D CAD guy quite yet. So I made a little design in Tinkercad. I feel like I made every error possible, but just wanted a place to put my on off switch, a place where I could hook in the USB cable. And you might be like, man, that's a big hole for the USB cable. I did that because I figured this would just be the first run. Um, you know, basically this is the space where the button will go through, where I'll fit in that ring and then the lid. And um, yeah, I don't know. I uh, I basically kind of like just put the rough sizes of each of the components in here, made some empty space. And I don't know, like I said, I'm no pro at this stuff. And, uh, you know, but it for the first run, I, it didn't turn out too bad. I mean, if I only did stuff that I was good at, I really wouldn't do, get much done. So you just got to try. So that's what I did. All right. So once I had everything together, you know, again, like this is the box, right? I just, so here's that button comes through, there, this roughly fits into the top, the NeoPixel's there. Here's the uh, proto board that I had. I just soldered everything up. The ESP32 battery connector. There's my LiPo battery down there, the connector, which actually of all the things that fit in there pretty nice. And uh, you just close it like this. All right, and then this is how this thing works, right? So it does fit on there. I know it's pretty, uh, pretty hokey looking, but give me a break here. Anyway, so you turn the thing on, it powers up, okay? and when you first turn it on, it goes into the mode where you're gonna set the time, all right? And there was a lot of ways to set the time. I've got 16 LEDs to work with, and I was like, well, how do I wanna do this? So this is how I've got it set up. There is, so every time you press the button and release it, it counts one, like one LED will turn on, right? So, and that counts for 10 seconds in the first phase, right? So this is, I pressed it, you can see that LED came on. So that would be 10 seconds, this would be 20 seconds. 30 seconds. And then if you press and hold, it goes to the next setting, right? So you see the LEDs kind of flash and now it's in the next. So now we can set minutes. So we have 30 seconds. Let's say I wanted 30 seconds in one minute, right? Then we could have two minutes. And then let's say I just want two minutes and 30 seconds. And then I release. And so then it goes into gameplay mode and immediately in gameplay mode, what it does is it starts at the color green. So all the LEDs are green and then it fades through a spectrum, and then when it gets to red, it starts to flash. Now, since, you know, we we set it for like, what, two minutes and 30 seconds, it's gonna take a while. So what I'm gonna do is I'll just shut it off, go ahead and turn it back on, and let's just do like, I don't know, 20 seconds, okay? So I'm just gonna hold this all the way through. So there, now we're gonna set minutes. I'll just, now I'll release it. Here we go. So here it's going, it's fading through the green, goes to like blue, then I think purple, and then eventually it's gonna to turn to that red color. And I kind of like how it, it looks, but then you can see now it's flashing red. You know, if it's somebody else's turn or you know their turn would be over, right? Now you, you pass it off to the next person. They just hit the button and it starts over. Now it's green, it goes through the spectrum. I mean, this is just like straight up simple. So the software is doing the math. It's, you know, determining how long that term is, ter turn is based on what your input is in the, in the gameplay. And again, you just press that and it just counts through that spectrum and adjusts it. So I don't know, that's the turn timer. Again, first iteration. Now I sent this over to my friend Chad at Hack Make Mod and uh, this is what he thought. I think he, I think he liked it. Hey Mike, I got your idea and I'm really inspired by it. I think it's a, I think it's a pretty cool idea. Um, here's my spin on it. Uh, see if you like it. So instead of using the ring, let's just use like a, a regular, like this kind right here, and just wrap it in a circle, use 10 lights. And then we put a button through the center, which I haven't quite you know, designed it all yet, but some kind of button. And then you have the body around it and the electronics can be in the base of this. And this has like a nice little, let me get rid of the button. 
it's hard to see here, but it has like a nice little curve here. So the light will gradiate out. And then I tried to do a rendering. Um, so it would look like this. And then when the lights came on, they would come on like that. That's kind of my, my thought process. I wanted to see what you thought. So yeah, I, uh, I really like that 3D design that Chad's got going on. I think that's awesome. We might try to put a little kit together just to put all these components in one little package uh, that we'll make available. Not available yet, but you know, check in, maybe, maybe it'll eventually be available. Who knows? We'll see what happens. But um, anyway, it's just so fun to collaborate and see something cool like this kind of come together. And I would love to get your thoughts. What, what do you think would be neat on a button like this? love to get your input and uh, see what we could do to just kind of play around. But I just, I love collaborating with people because um, just leaning into other people's skills and abilities is pretty exciting to see what can kind of come out. So one last thing, I know I didn't really go over the code here. It's not too complicated, but there are some fun things in it. If you're interested in me kind of walking through this code for this project, let me know in the comments and I can make a video that goes step-by-step step through the code. We could talk about it. Do use a really cool library for those NeoPixels. It's called the Fast LED Library. And they have a fantastic Reddit uh, community around using that library. So it's really, uh, it's really nice to kind of get up and started with it. It's pretty fun. Some interesting code examples to kind of get you started. Anyway, if you want to learn more about uh, the code in this project, definitely let me know in the comments and I will go, uh, you know, we can just go step by step through the code if, if you thought that was interesting. So thanks a ton. Also, thanks so much to Ultium for sponsoring this video. If you want to get a free trial of an amazing PCB design software, check out the description. Use our link. You can get a free trial of Ultium Designer. Now, if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, please do. We put out interesting builds and lots of lessons and stuff about using Arduino all the time. If you really want to do a deep dive into Arduino, check out our website, programmingelectronics.com. We have training that you can sign up for to teach you how to do stuff like this, like Arduino programming, that kind of thing. And I'd love if you'd like the video, share it with your friends, and you know, all that good stuff. All right. Have a fantastic one. Take it easy. Bye.